When we look at a convex bevel or a hollow grind bevel with the same thickness of shank, the edge has a specific geometry, but the bevel influences how that edge behaves in the wood. If you look at the shank thickness of each of these tools, this one's the skinniest at just over a quarter of an inch. And these two on the outer sides are three eighths of an inch thick. The edge configuration is actually the same at both of these. It's centered in the shank of the tool at approximately 30 to 35 degrees. The edge geometry would be the same at the edge, but the way that it behaves when you're cutting wood changes the character of that skew drastically. The convex bevel has a functional angle or a functional geometry at the edge of about 30 to 35 degrees. There's no other portion of the bevel that is contacting the wood if I'm cutting a straight surface or a flat surface. It's right behind the edge. But if I look at the geometry of the edge of the hollow grind tool, you'll see that that flat surface would actually go through part of the shank. The functional angle as I go deeper in becomes blunter as the support of the wood rides up the hollow grind, that angle shifts. If I have the edge deep into a cut, the heel of the bevel is going to glide and actually make this a blunter functional angle. That means that as I go into a cut, the tool shank will have to be shifted to keep this edge steering in the direction I want to cut. The geometric angle and functional angle being the same on a convex bevel tool, the convex bevel skew means that once I have the angle of the shank established to have support behind the edge, I can glide that tool in that same orientation all the way through the cut. It gives me great predictability from the start of the cut to a finish of a cut. Let's take a look at another diagram just to give us an idea of what kind of cuts this functional and geometric angle play into. So taking a look at some diagrams to highlight the differences between the convex bevel and the hollow grind bevel, we'll look at a convex surface. On the outside of a cylinder, a hollow grind bevel is going to glide against the bevel draw the edge back until the edge engages with the wood and the geometric and functional angle at this point are the same. In a bead or a convex surface, same thing here. Bevel contact, draw the edge back so that it introduces into the wood and the bevel contact is directly behind the edge all the way through the cut. The geometric and the functional angle are the same. In a convex bevel skew, there is really no difference. Draw back until the edge engages with the wood and proceed with the cut. The geometric and functional angle are the same. In a bead, same thing. Draw back until the edge engages with the wood. The geometric and functional angle are the same throughout the cut. There is no difference in a convex surface between the convex bevel and the hollow grind bevel. Let's take a look at where they really stand apart. In a concave or a coving cut, the two bevel designs differ quite a bit. The hollow grind bevel runs into some problems with the geometric and functional angles being quite a bit different. Bevel contact, draw back till the edge engages in a shallow cove, and the bevel support is maintained out at the corner of the cove. The functional angle then comes into play as quite a bit different from the geometric angle, bridging the support for the cutting edge way back at the corner or the heel of the bevel. In a deeper cove, the problem is only amplified. Geometric angle, pivot point as you enter the cut, and now the functional angle is quite a bit steeper. This is almost as though you're plowing wood as you go through. 
The convex bevel excels at a shallow cove, but runs into some difficulty in the deeper cove as well. Again, draw back till the edge engages in the cut, proceed with the cut, and the pivot point stays directly behind the edge all the way through the cut. There is no bridging effect because the geometric angle and the functional angle are the same. When we go into a deeper cove, we run into the same problems as the hollow grind. Geometric angle, draw back until the edge engages, glide that bevel into the cut, but now the edge is not supported directly behind the cut because this cove is deeper than the actual convex surface of the bevel. This skew would not excel over the hollow grind. The two have difficulties in a deep cove. Let's take a look at a flat cut or a straight cut to see the difference between the two grinds. When looking at creating a straight cut or a surface that is flat, the two bevel designs differ quite a bit as well. In a cylinder, a planing cut, the hollow grind will run into a problem because the geometric and functional angles are different. Drawing that edge back till it engages with the wood. As you go through the cut, the pivot point maintains on the bevel and shows the difference between the geometric and the functional angle. In an end grain or paring cut across the end of a cylinder, same phenomenon happens. Bevel support behind the edge, draw that edge back till it engages in the wood, and the pivot point maintains out at the corner. The farther into the cut, the more you approach the functional angle, which is quite a bit steeper than the geometric angle. And in a V cut, the exact same thing happens. Enter the cut with the bevel supported right behind the edge and the farther into the cut that you go, the more the geometric angle and the functional angle differ. You'll also find that the deeper into a V cut that you go with this blunt of a functional angle, you'll end up touching on the other side of the V. You can't get quite as crisp a V from this style of tool. With a convex bevel across the surface of a cylinder, the support stays directly behind the edge throughout the cut. The geometric and functional angles are the same. At the end of a cylinder in a paring cut, same phenomenon. Draw the edge back, edge support is directly behind the edge on that part of the bevel. The geometric and functional angles are the same. And in a V cut, the same thing. Support maintains directly behind the edge all the way through the cut. Now you'll notice the geometric angle of the edge of both the convex bevel and the hollow grind bevel that I'm showing are the same, but this particular bevel design allows that edge to go all the way into the V. In looking at all six cuts, the convex bevel has an advantage over the hollow grind bevel in producing a straight surface and also a slight cove. Anytime that there's a convex surface that you're creating, both skew designs, both bevel designs behave pretty much the same with the geometric and functional angles being the same. In any straight cut or coving cut, the geometric angle and functional angle being the same on a convex bevel skew give it quite an advantage. In my experience, this means ultimate tool control, resulting in less skates and catches, and greater predictability when I choose to use the skew. It also means amazingly clean cut surfaces, which minimizes the need for sanding. The skew is designed as a spindle turning tool, and in all of the skills I introduce in this video, I use spindle grain orientation. Spindle grain orientation means that with a blank between centers and the axis of rotation in the middle of the blank, all of the grain runs parallel to this axis of rotation. For your safety and success, I recommend clean spindle grain orientation only. 